Hey. I'm just messing with y'all. What's good? This your boy Dizzy D Spill, and you are tuning into another episode of the Notion Podcast with a continuing series of cleaning up the culture. I really hope that you guys have been enjoying these volumes or the different volumes that we have in the Notion Podcast. We're here to help. Yes, we're here to help. So yeah, um, without further ado, let's get into it. Hey, hey. I don't know if y'all heard that record. That is uh, it's one of my favorite. That's one of my favorite songs on my catalog. It's going to be live featuring my brother, Sir J, K Woods. Everybody came with it. I honestly like Sir J's verse. The best out of all of ours because he really did his thing. So, shout out to my brother Sir J. Anyways, um, by now I'm pretty sure that you guys know what cleaning up the culture is all about, and um, basically, you know, it is a volume of conversations and topics where I feel like I can express my concern and encourage some solutions um, for those concerns here on the notion podcast in the future. I might have the guys on this type of episode or, you know, who knows what uh, the, the different directions, excuse me, that um, we can go, but um, it's definitely something that's important to me. I remember on one of the recent episodes, I said that, uh, that, um, I wasn't really down with the the past cultures. And I mean that. And it was inspired by 19 Keys, but I, I'm really taking it into action. I don't think it's deep enough to where we have to come up with a name or I have to come up with a name for, oh, this is the new culture. It's just making things not cool anymore that have been acceptable and that I think have been detrimental to to the African-American culture or the foundational black or however you want to identify yourself these days. And there's a couple of subtopics. It's a different pool of topics that I wanted to um, bring up and address things like that. Um, before I get into it, if you are tuning in on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, on Podbean or on YouTube, please like and subscribe these algorithms they they control everything so if you're not if you're not subscribed and you don't turn the notifications on there is going to be a difficult time ahead of you as far as in catching new episodes catching content catching shorts on youtube and um you can if you're an instagram person and you like getting your notifications from there follow the notion pod uh podcast on instagram Twitter, not really active on Twitter too much, but that's something that I got to uh, get the team to improve on. But uh, moving forward, basically with um, the cleaning up the culture episode, I wanted to go through a series of different things. Right. And one of those things I wanted to talk about is where are black men? OK, um, where um, where is black men in today's climate? Um, how are black men? Um, adapting to certain things. Uh, will the big homie concept ever come back? We've talked about that on the Notion podcast. Um, just those different um, things. And I, I feel like this is definitely dedicated. This is a locker room conversation for, for you guys, for the brothers. And I've seen people in different spaces or the manosphere that are talking about a lot of dating things and, and shout out to all of those folks uh, that are trying to make a difference with their perspective or their point of view. But I also would like to talk about um, just where we're at in, in the different dynamics that we, in the, in the, the, the dynamics of different relationships that we have with people. 
And for starters, I would love for you guys to share in the comment section, like, where do you think black men are? And, and if it just so happens to be some women in here, fine. You know, you, you want to see what's going on in the locker room? Cool. Go ahead and, and leave a comment. I personally think that there's some good and there's some bad. There's some things that we can work on and there are some things that we're doing great at. I feel like more black, it, from what I'm seeing, it seems like more black men are trying to change some of the bad stigmas that we have. I believe that there are more black men that are showing in so many ways that they're proud fathers. They're proud of whatever commitments they have with their girlfriends or co-parenting or their wife. I do see an improvement. I, it, it's pretty cool because I see a lot of the opposite of what people uh, complain about on social media. Cause you know, social media, that's, it's, kind of part of real life but it's not real life and then when I look in the lens of real life as we know it I see a lot of people really doing their thing and I want to say to the black men I'm proud of you you know the fathers and the men out there that are working their ass they're working their ass off the the, the blue collar brothers or people that's even above that and the people that are just trying to get it together so salute to you But I do raise the question of where are black men today? Are we still behind on certain things? Um, yes, I do believe that we are behind, but I don't necessarily believe that it's 100 percent our fault. Just straight up. I don't I don't think it's 100 percent our fault. And not that I don't have anything to support that. There's facts in history that shows that, you know, we've. There's been a um, 300 year head start um, with other cultures and us. The other thing, uh, not other thing, but the thing that I specifically want to highlight about where we need to improve on, improve on is the leadership and unity in leadership in our culture. See, in the newer culture, the culture that I'm going to associate myself with over here. We support each other over here. We have real conversations when there's a problem. The consortium of people that I am affiliated with these days, we have real conversations. We express how we feel like adults. Everything doesn't need to be violent. Everything doesn't need to be a dig. And most importantly, everything doesn't need to be a subliminal or uh, a jab at each other on social media where there's a stage where you can um, act out and be a character that you really are not. You know, you can identify as a character that you really aren't known for. So that's some of the things that, that does need improving culturally, culture-wide. But I, um, in the culture that I'm going to identify with, that's something that's going to be and that's going that's actually happening where we're having real honest conversations. We're sharing how we feel. We're speaking up. So I, I think that that is something that we can improve on. I think we can also improve on how we carry ourselves. And don't get me wrong. Freedom of expression. I'm all for it. Cool. But how we present ourselves and how we. Uh, advertise ourselves in the world because you got to you got to remember you are a walking advertisement for what you represent and where you've came from it's not necessarily it's not necessarily always about how you dress or how people um, of other hues view you it's how you conduct yourself so I'm not going to sit up here. I, there's been videos out there about black men need to change the way they dress, need to change their hair. Um, there is some truth to that, depending on different spaces that you want to be in. If you want to be in a space where you're going to be the minority, you probably are going to have to make those adjustments. It's, I just don't see that happening anywhere in the private sector where you can change some, you know, 100 percent change people uh, as opinion or judgment on you or prejudice on you. But just how we conduct ourselves, how we conduct ourselves in public. I, I remember uh, 
probably over a month ago, I went into a supermarket. I was making a run for my son, get some stuff for him and some stuff for the household. And it was a dude, he was mixed, but you can tell he was definitely mixed with some brother. And, you know, he had on a whole bunch of 49er stuff. So, you know, get, get, get your fan 49er fans, get, get your boy. But, um, he was going off. Somebody must have offended him. I don't really know the whole story, but all I know is that when I walked in there, I seen how he was acting. You know, every other word, you know, was the N word coming out of his mouth. Uh, he was really, he was going back and forth with the cashier, uh, calling her all kinds of names, saying her mama was this, and it just looked real bad. Now, there are some people that believe that when one of us act up, uh, black man just lost a whole bunch of points or black man just took 10 steps back. Let's, let's, does dead that narrative right there. That's not true. That black man does not speak for you or any of the people that I am affiliated with. But it does add a extra, it does add extra judgment to the stereotype that we already have to deal with. I will say that the more that we conduct ourselves better publicly, the better turnout we will be. I mean, it's, it's no different than the, Will Smith and Chris Rock incident, black people, it affected black people, black men a lot differently than it affected the, uh, the rest of the world that witnessed it, you know, for the rest of the world, it was, it was embarrassing. He's a bully. Uh, you know, it was all of those things. But for us, we're just like, oh man, why does it have to be us? You know, this is a moment in the Oscars where, you know, black people were, getting acknowledged in different categories and winning awards and, you know, Will Packer with setting everything up. It, it, it hit us differently. And what I was proud of is the fact that it wasn't perpetuated. It wasn't encouraged. You know, there was a lot of people of our, in our culture that, that, that didn't agree with it. And that, that, you know, for a lot of people, it hurt them, you know, in a way where it's like, damn, man, that, I don't know how I feel about that. You know, one of my favorite actors and one of my favorite comedians. And I was proud to see that black people weren't just as a unit, like, yeah, that's how it should go down. And that's how we handle stuff. It really showed me that we're trying to show the world that, you know, these stereotypes that have been perpetuated about us is way far away from inaccurate, from inaccurate. You know, it's, it's, it's inaccurate. Inaccurate is what I'm trying to say, man. I can't talk. I got to get, I got to get it together. So I was really proud to see black people do that. Um, really speak on that and really shame that. And I think that's the, that's the, that that's leading to my next point. I really feel like black people need to start shaming things that were acceptable when we were young. And it sucks that we have to be older men We have to grow up to be older men. We have to get in our thirties and we have to have kids and families to do this. But you know what? Cool. We just need to, we just need to really, really, really push the hard line with that. It's not acceptable. In this new wave, it's, it's not acceptable. It's about class. It's about respect. It's about support. It's about networking. It's about Having conversations, solving problems without guns, solving solving problems without fighting. That's what it's about. That's where we need to be. And I do believe we'll be there. I do. I wholeheartedly do. So as far as things that we need to work on, we do need to do a better job with our behavior. I am one of those individuals when a story comes out Or when somebody sends me a DM about something that happens, because I do get those on a daily basis for for you guys that don't know, I go to where I'm going. I believe the most important information is when an article comes out, I like to go to the comment section. The comment section on these social media platforms is very telling. It gives you great insight on where we are and where our peers are um, in today's climate. So if it's something controversial, I go to the, the comment section. I go to the likes. I go to the dislikes if that's viewable. I go to the emojis on Facebook. And it tells me a lot. It gives me a lot of data. And... 
the way that we speak, first of all, we got to take our time and I'm guilty of it myself. We got to take our time to make sure that when we write something that people can actually understand what we write. Cause I think we get so passionate and so emotional about what we're writing. We leave out words. We're not putting commas. We're, we're not, we're not doing the punctuation and, and, and fixing the grammatical errors that we need to make. So let's start there. We come on brothers. We're, we're smarter than that. Okay. And if people want to believe otherwise, that's their problem. But we are smarter than that. So let's let's try to let's try to convey our message in a way where people are going to understand, understand it. All right. The other thing is that we do need to be careful with how we are advertising ourselves when we have a rebuttal. There is a annoying civil war right now between black men and black women. I don't know how many people on YouTube are talking about it. I know a lot of the big platforms and big name people are talking about it. And unfortunately we are not friends, so I'm not going to name those people and give them free promotion. But I noticed that it is a very sick trend and it's, it's a, we're going nowhere fast. This, this debate, this civil war is going nowhere fast. And every time something controversial is posted, it's news or it's written down, it turns into a, it turns into WWF and WCW in the comment section. I'm seeing Stone Cold Stunners, Rock Bottoms, DDTs, Power Bombs, Razor's Edge, Pedigrees. I'm just seeing a straight mob session of going back and forth and, and it serves no purpose. Like nobody wins. Every time the comment section goes crazy, nobody wins. It's 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 the other, I guess it's the synonym way of explaining things like Jay-Z tried to explain on 444. Nobody wins when a family feuds. And I just think that most of these YouTubers, most of these people, most of these platforms, not only are they getting the exposure and getting the points to get in the algorithm by sharing things that stir the pot, but it's not even beneficial to us. It's not even beneficial to our culture. It really isn't. And I think we got to pay attention to that and we, and we got to do better. How does this affect and how does, what does this have to do with black men? Because I see a lot of black men in the comment section looking, looking just as angry, just as jealous, just as bitter, just as mad as a lot of black women I see in the comment section, brother, you are no better. And what I'm noticing is it's really telling. I just don't believe that there's a lot of husbands, a lot of wives and a lot of dedicated parents just going crazy in the comic section, in the comment section on social media. And if you're one of those men that are out there listing all of the things that you do and what you're about in the comment section, I, me personally, I wouldn't believe you because, you know, a lot of people that do that are trying to give you, they're trying to make you believe something that they're, that they're really not about. What did Jay-Z said? We don't believe you. You need more people. Yes, yes, that applies to you. Because it's just, when it when it's, when it's in you and not on you, there's a certain way you move. There's a certain way you move. There's a certain way you talk when you really got it. Like, matter of fact, you know, the more value you got, the more quiet you are because you don't want to get exposed. You don't want people, the, the liars and people that tell the truth do have something in common. They don't want to get exposed. The richest people don't look rich. The people that are lying don't want to get exposed. Neither one wants to truly get exposed and, and show people what they really have. Right? So, brothers, we have to do a better job. Stop arguing with the women. I'm going to be honest. That's kind of their thing. We With the going back and forth and before you know, y'all, let me tell you something. Man, y'all keep arguing with these women. You're going to find yourself snapping your hand and rolling your neck and popping gum. All right? Be careful. You might turn into a woman in that argument, man. You better be careful. That's their, that is their domain. Most women live for that. There's some women that, that can't stand that and they're not going to waste their time. But women, a lot of women, most women live for that debate. We grew up seeing comedians say, don't argue with one, one, no woman because they're never wrong. That doesn't mean that they're never wrong. That just simply means that in their mind, you're not going to win. You have all the facts right in front of them. You're not going to win. 
So stop that, man. It's, it's damaging to your image. Look, I read a book and I ain't going to give all the details and all the, all the free promo. I read a book that said, guard your reputation with your life. And those of you who've read this popular book, y'all know what I'm talking about, but that's a real thing. You really need to guard your reputation with your life. You think that you don't care about what other people think about you, but just the, the fact that you have to vocalize that to anybody lets everybody know that you care, even if it's just a little bit. We do care. Even when we say we don't, we do care. We say it out loud because we're trying to make ourselves believe that. We really do care. Now, will we let it affect us? That's different, but we do care for sure. So if we care, we got to do a better job of protecting that, protecting that reputation, protecting the things that you stand on. But leading into the next thing, we actually got to stand on things. We got to call shit out between one another. And it doesn't necessarily have to be on a public platform. It doesn't have to be on social media or, you know, uh, in a public setting where that person feels embarrassed or they feel challenged. It just needs to be exposed. If you have a homie that lies all the time, pull him aside and say, cut the bullshit. If you have somebody that's still all the time, but you love them to death, give them the ultimatum. Either you stop doing this shit or you're to the other side. We have to start facing these facts, facing these problems, these things that are damaging our relationship and our reputation with each other and the way we're being perceived by others. Because at the end of the day, we do have to work together no matter how much we like it, no matter how much you want to tell yourself, I don't have to do nothing. I can do everything by myself. I've been raising myself since I was three. Whatever you want to say, it has to be done. It has to be. You have to be able to function in this world. There's a few lucky people out there that make a lot of money and they're antisocial and they love being antisocial, but everybody doesn't have that luck or luxury. So we have to work together. We have to call things out, but we also have to learn to listen. You have some people that listen to respond. Actually let the information marinate in your mind. Like really hear this person out that might have an issue with you and and hope that you get the same thing when it's your turn and you have the floor to speak. But we when I look at where we are as black men, that's what I see. I see there's still one one of the things that was damaged that's that was damaging us and still is damaging us in our in the hip hop culture. And y'all know I, I'm a, I'm an artist. I respect music. I respect most forms of music, but the competitive aspect has done a lot of damage to us. Not who's the best or whatever. And you want to, you want to talk your shit here and there. I'm saying the way we try to elevate ourselves by basically sticking our cleats in the person's face as we climb to the top, you know, it, I'm even guilty of it in some of my lyrics, man. You know, the, the broke nigga versus rich nigga conversation. All of these different things. Um, it does it does some damage to us. I mean, you want to talk your noise on a couple songs, but, you know, it it does do some damage. It does do some damage, especially if you if you really feel that way. If you really feel like, I can't be around nobody broken. And, 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 and Now, I get it. Like. You don't want nobody leeching on you, but everybody's not as, as fortunate of you, as you. And and we see that because we see artists donate things all the time, especially back to where they come from, from where they come from, you know. And um, there are a lot of things that we made cool that are not cool. Uh, the sleeping with your girl concept and music. The I, I don't know. That's weird to me. But the all of these different elements of things that are not progressive uh my boy Huss was giving me some advice on different ways to attack the microphone when I release more music and the thing that stuck out to me the most was you know the positive aspect of what we could promote we spent a lot of time telling our story and painting that grand picture of the truth of where we come from. But we also got to talk about the, the good times 
living through the rough times. Everything doesn't have to be gloomy. Everything doesn't have to be syrup sandwiches and sugar water. You know, we can talk about loyalty. We can talk about respect. We can talk about love. We can talk about that one person that inspired us, whether it was, you know, the football coach all, or if it was your homeboy's father. Like I lost my father at 14 and I got a lot of inspiration from my older brother. I got a lot of inspiration from some of my friends, fathers. Uh, I got any inspiration in any game in any OG wisdom from anybody that was willing to give up the game because I knew that I was starting the race with one shoe on. Not having my dad around at the beginning of a, uh, me learning how to be a man. So I understand for sport and for sparring, we say some things, we take some digs, but I think we just need to have an equal balance. If we're going to talk our noise and we're going to, you know, pop our collar and we're going to flex, we also got to give the game. You know, we also got to show that there's an other side to it. You know, we got to, we have to do those things, black men. And, I'm not saying that I'm closing with this, but our sisters, we do. Listen, I would be a liar if I tried to act like our sisters is just the easiest people to deal with. Now, I know that most of you sisters try to spin that narrative, but you guys are not the easiest people to deal with. Most of you aren't. I said it. Most of you are not. However, I do not believe that there is any woman that can truly understand us the way you can or really know how to kind of calm the beast down in us as you know we have our guard up and i think that black men we forget that we do we forget that i've heard from my wife i've heard and seen i mean from my wife to the my days on listening to conversations on clubhouse from women in different countries to uh, some of the posts I see on social media some of the videos i watched on youtube that's where i get a lot of my data from different different angles and different elements, right? And I've just heard this narrative about black men and I I fall in that category. So I'm talking about us where we just don't appreciate you guys or the ones that are dating other people are having this flex and acting like, you know, everybody else is better than black women. Now, I'm going to be honest. I haven't really witnessed it myself. So I do scratch my head and I do wonder, uh, sisters, please share in the comment section or, or DM me some scenarios, some valid scenarios of brothers just really dissing y'all and really bigging, uh, bigging up other, other, other women that are not of our hue. And I'm not talking about no dusties. I'm not even talking about people that y'all wouldn't date. That's what kills me about y'all sisters. Y'all be complaining about people y'all don't even want. Why are y'all here? Like, don't, but share that information with me because I've been hearing this narrative about us and I just don't see it like you guys see it or see what you guys see. But I do know, brothers, we have to do a better job appreciating these women. And it's, it doesn't always have to be because your mama was black. Well, women, sisters, for the record, y'all got to be careful who y'all telling that to because y'all could be telling that to somebody whose mom abandoned them. And didn't want them. Now you looking stupid. Now you have no point. You know, you, you there could be some men out there that's had some really rough relationships with sisters that wasn't necessarily a dating one. Okay. And I don't want to get into all of that and in, in that instance, but y'all, y'all, y'all have an imagination. So stop that. But for the brothers at the same time, like there are many reasons why we do have to put more value into our women. There are, because I just don't believe that anybody can understand us as well as them. I don't think that there's a better partnership when we have the right tools. When you have the right tools in a relationship with black women, 
Um, I, I do think the success rate could be a whole lot better. Now, I know you, Kevin Samuels and different people, they've had their opinions about certain scenarios. And I and I am a fan of a lot of those folks in the manosphere, but I do have a different type of hope and a different type of visual, um, more of a solution based concept to the Civil War. And I do think that if we're going to talk about anybody or we're going to talk about both sides, when it comes to the brothers, brothers, I do believe we do have to do a better job of being more understanding. I do think that we, just like I hold a lot of women, most women accountable for who they choose. I I'm, I stand by that. You can't go around blaming a group of people that you chose to deal with or a person that you chose to deal with. You can blame them for how they've treated you or the deception, if there was anything uh, deceitful going on, but I do hold people accountable to their, cause we have free will. God has given us free will, whether you want to believe in God or not, we all have free will to make choices. So with that, with, with free will comes accountability. So I hold you accountable women, but right now I'm talking about the brothers, brothers, you can't go around talking about sisters or this or sisters or that, but you only want to pick women that, you only want to pick women, oh, because her booty big, she has a big booty and yeah, I'm trying to do this or I'm trying to do that. Or I heard that, you know, she's this in the bedroom and then you get mad because she doesn't have any intellectual side or she doesn't have any home training. Yo, this is who you're picking, bruh. And, and the same goes, oh yeah, man, I was talking to this girl and she had some money, you know what I'm saying? I was That's where I was trying to be at, you feel me? She had some money and, and you know, she was hooking everything up and then she started throwing shit on my face. Well, look at yourself. Did Why did you choose her? Did you choose her because she could support you and you better than you, than you could support yourself? Is that what it was? Your choice. Y'all got to choose people for the right reasons. Don't choose people for the wrong. Brothers, do not choose these women for the wrong reason and then try to go back and complain because I shoot that down every time with a lot of women. There's different baggage that comes with people. There's baggage that you can see on site with people. So, fellas, if y'all want the tens, right, y'all want the... um. The Fashion Nova girls and the IG models and the girls that have booty pictures on every row and every photo is a side shot so you can see the angle of the yams and all of that stuff. Understand something or something that comes with that. That screams I want attention. That screams I want male attention. And do not expect them to change just because you're in their life. That's what you picked. You want a woman that has some respect or you want to speak about women that have respect, do that. Spend your time speaking on the women that you respect instead of speaking on the ones that you have no respect for. Believe me, I've been tempted on dozens of occasions to speak my mind about how a lot of women carry themselves, but that doesn't do anything for the ones that I respect. So I'll choose to share things that I respect about certain women out there, certain things they say, certain messages they put out there. That's where I'm going to put the energy into. But when it comes to our sisters, y'all need to pick positive things to share, just like there's negative stuff to share. That's easy to find. There are platforms that are easy to find. The algorithm is so nasty. Now you can just open your phone or you can open your TikTok and some BS is going to pop up. So you make a choice. If you want to see more respectful things, start sharing more respectful things. The universe, the, the universe really does work like that. The, the, the universe works in a way you throw you throw your boomerang is going to come right back. You throw a boomerang of positivity out there and you keep throwing boomerangs about positivity out there. Guess what? Those positivity boomerangs are going to come right back. It's the same thing with negative energy. It's just we choose to invest more in negative energy and wonder why we end up empty. Everything is a currency. Energy is a currency. It is a form of currency. If you keep investing your energy into negative feelings, into negative thoughts, into into what you think might happen or your perspective on something, guess what? Your account is now empty because your investment is a negative energy. And guess what? The transaction is going to be negative energy. That's what you invested into. So guess what? Compound interest. 
For y'all that know what that is, you're going to get all, all of it back. So, brothers, we have to do a better job getting more understanding. It's crazy sometimes what we'll be patient for versus what we won't be patient for and what you can get out of those things. Like, we we don't have... Sometimes I feel like we don't have enough patience with our women, but you know, we'll be loyal to other things to a fault. And I've heard women speak on that and there's some truth to that. You know, when they get mad and they say that shit, there's some truth to that. So we have to do a better job. And and we have to remember something too. A lot of us are raising daughters, right? Almost all of my homeboys got a little girl, even like my cousins. Got little girls And you know the saying Oh yeah you was a dog Back in the day So you got a little girl That's um, that. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie That could be true With a couple of homies But the point is Is that You're going to One of my partners Shout out to Jamal One of my partners said I'm going to train My daughter to not date a me You know what I'm saying And I honestly don't think He is that bad I think we're all young I think we've all made mistakes And for the record he's He has a family He's married And stuff like that So he ain't He ain't one of them ones That you think ladies If you listening You know he He's He's doing what he's supposed to do He's on his shit But I understood what he meant Because he understood the mindset Of Where we were as young men And where a lot of young men's mindset Are today So the same applies. I mean, I'm talking about the fellas, but women, y'all can hear this information too. Y'all got to think too, when y'all talking all of this noise about men and men ain't shit and black men are this, and you are raising a black boy that you're not really helping the situation or giving a good example. You know, you're basically saying to your, to your precious son, you ain't finna be shit because there ain't shit out here. And I know you guys don't feel that way about your boys. So with, with black men, we have to be more, aware that a lot of us have little girls right and what do you want for your daughter she has to have as much as you love her and as much as you want to protect her she has to have positive examples so you that means you have to find if you're having a hard time you have to find positive examples for your daughter to see if you feel like your 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 partner your person that you're co-parenting aren't giving those examples, you better go find some. It's your responsibility to get those examples for her. But we, we have to get a better understanding with them. We have to get on a better page. We have to end the civil war because it's detrimental to our culture and, and how we're growing or not growing, right? So, so fellas do that. The obvious thing that we also have to talk about as far as in where we are is we got to stop killing each other and killing ourselves man over just over the years pre-covid till now a lot of our men are dying from drugs and violence let me tell you something i remember when i was in high school i remember i was in junior high you were lame if you wore your clothes a certain type of way, or if you were not in the certain in crowd, or you couldn't get cute girls. It was, <laughs> there was a long list for you to, of, of things, of offenses for you to be labeled lame than there was for you to actually be cool, which is kind of jacked up. Like anything could put you in the lame category. I'm here to say as a grown man with a family and with good hopes for our people and a vision that there's some things that are lame. Taking lives because you can't handle your emotions. You're lame. You're a sucker. You can't even, you can't even run the fade. Uh, another thing that I think is lame it's not being man enough to really express how you feel, really have a conversation. That's lame, man. Taking yourself out and taking people out with you because you had a bad day. That's lame. That's some loser shit. Now, I understand that people have demons. 
and we need help. And, I, and that's another thing that I'm also going to say is lame. I think it's lame for judging people that actually are trying to go get help, that need to go get people to talk to. If you're judging, you're making fun of them or, yeah, man, they got a few screws loose. They need their therapy isn't there because you can't function. Therapy is there so you can get back on track to be able to function. So the people out there that that shame therapy or that put a label or a tag or a jacket on somebody because they're getting therapy, you lame, you a sucker. You out there, Dolo. You ain't growing. I just want to let it be known that that shit ain't hot no more. That shit ain't cool. It's not cool RIP posts every time you turn around or, um, you know, dissing each other, taking each other out. We're taking a lot of fathers away from their children. And, And even when you're doing stuff to yourself, man, this, you know, this crisis with the drugs that people are taking is insane. I ain't even going to call you lame if you have an issue because I understand addiction is, is real. It's, it's damaged some people that I love dearly in my family. What I will say is that it's unfortunate, but to perpetuate it and to promote it and not even understand the consequences that come with it, that's lame. That's weak. That's trash. So we have to do a better job. Like I said, we need more balance. I understand you're going to have that street talk and you got to tell your story. You got to paint that picture because it wasn't always roses where you came from. Cool. But you need to have something to balance that too. You need to have something for the kids to understand, you know, that they do have options. Not everybody has to be a rapper, uh, has to be in the music industry, has to be an athlete. There's so many things that we lack in our community community and our culture and we don't do enough promoting that we'll promote violence we'll promote drugs we'll promote all of the bullshit but we don't promote these kids and i'm not talking about the cliche be a doctor be a lawyer there's so many things that we need in our community to build it have you, has anybody ever started promoting plumbers electricians blue collar work because those are the men and women that built this country the blue collar workers so start shouting that out. Don't let them be ashamed. I don't care what it is that you don't care if you're a forklift driver. I don't care if you're a warehouse worker. I don't care if you're a lead. I don't, whatever it is, you're a bus driver, whatever. If you're you're doing something that is helping people get to the next level, then that's that's the stuff that needs to be promoted in the music. And that should never be laughed at. That should never be put down. I I hear things all the time. Yeah, I made this in a week and you made that in a year. That's cool. But you're the only one that's sitting there and you're not a boss. If you're the only one with a gold chain of rings on and your whole team ain't got at least 80% of the same things, not 80% of what you have, but 80% of the same things that you got, you're not a boss. Not a general How are you going to be strong but your army weak? That's crazy to me. It's insane. Actually makes you weak in the end. You have no protection. So I look at it like we have to get back to a level where we accept accept each other and we respect each other no matter what it is. You, you, You respect the janitor with the same respect you respect the CEO with. You want to talk about you want to talk about ignorant shit? I got a, my partner, me. We talk about all the time. Yo, man, we're going to talk about some ignorant shit or when I'm looking up ignorant shit. OK, that's fine. But there's a healthy balance. We have intellectual conversations and we have goals, too, even though we do talk about ignorant stuff. So we got to get better with this whole what's lame, what's not, what's lame is is driving somebody insane. What's lame is knocking somebody for don't for not having what you don't have. And in hip hop is Hilarious to me because almost every hip hop artist talks about sleeping next to roaches and rats. And then three tracks later, all y'all motherfuckers broke. Wait, hold on. Hold on. What? Didn't he just? So there has to be a balance. If you're going to talk about that, if you want to talk about sleeping next to roaches and rats and you want to talk about um, the violence, you also got to talk about how to get out and applauding the people that never even had to go that route. Balance. Black men, these are things that are damaging to us. These are things that we have to work on. It's it's vital to our future. The seats that you are sitting in right now are not for you. They're for the future. That was told to me once at a school that I'm, I'm proud that I went to. And more and more, I understand that statement. The position that you're in right now is not for you. It's for the future. 
So prepare it right. Get people right. Share the game. Share the knowledge. If you feel like there's there's 11 kids and out of those 11 kids, there's only one that actually you have faith in because they seem like they listen and care about what you got to say. Do everything in your power. Be a mentor. We don't have that no more. We don't have the big homie concept anymore. I remember Jelani was talking about that on a recent episode. I think it was within the first two seasons of the podcast. We don't have a big homie. No, we have big homies. Now we're the big homies and we're kind of dropping the ball because we're not giving the younger generation what we had. Now, I know there's a lot of knuckleheads that don't want to listen. They think they know it all, but find the ones that want to listen. There's always one that wants to listen or somebody that's looking for some guidance. Take the time out. Mentor. Give the game. You want to see change. You got to be the change you want to see. It's simple. It's all cliche. You've heard it before, but that doesn't mean it's not true. If you've heard it before and you haven't tried it, you must be the problem. Mentor, help. I don't want to hear nobody complaining about shit. And you're not giving any contributions. You're not trying to find a way to help. Black men, we've came a long way. There are things that I am proud of. Fathers really, really taking children serious. Men growing up and growing out of things that were really immature. And it may have taken some of us longer than others, but at least you here. I see more black men talking about businesses and investing. I'm proud of that. Let's just let's 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 be more hyper focused on that. On building. And it's okay to have your click, but don't think that you're going to be able to just make it with your click. You have to make it with relationships. Clicks are cool. Crews are cool. But you need relationships. You, we need bigger networks. We have to learn to work with each other, even if we don't rock with each other like that. Now, I, I'm not talking about if it's a snake person or anything on that level. But, you know, if we don't if there's some of us that don't care for each other, but we understand that there's value there. Put your feelings aside because this is bigger than us. Remember, those seats aren't for you. They're for the future. We have so much that we have accomplished and we have so much more away. So, so many more miles to go. But that's the good thing. We've accomplished a lot, but we have a lot more we need to catch up on. Remember, we're we're 300 years behind. Figure out ways where we can knock those 300 years down to like maybe 50 or 20. We have the resources. We have the platforms. We damn sure have the talent. We damn sure have the intelligence. Let's use that and kind of tone down the judgment. Let's do that. I hope that um, I really hope I got through to somebody I hope that There's been some inspiration there And um, This is cleaning up the culture Remember what I said I'm, I'm on to a better More efficient More respectable Culture For people of our hue black men let me know how you feel about the episode leave comments like i said if you're on youtube subscribe if you're on spotify subscribe if you're on apple Podcasts, subscribe podbean subscribe and if you got a little bit more time leave your comments on what you think leave comments on topics that you think i should cover or we should cover on cleaning up the culture or the notion podcast this is your boy dizzy d spill you've been turning to tuning in to the notion podcast on an episode of cleaning up the culture i thank you i appreciate you i'll see you next time peace